Greetings, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this, the second episode of Check It Out, our check-in uh, with the library uh, here in town about all uh, a, a number of different subjects. We'll cover in each of these episodes both something that the library offers or initiates um, or we want to let folks know about, um, as such as is as is the case today, uh, but also we'll make sure that we let you know of things coming up that you should be paying attention to or looking out for at the library because if you're tuning in to this program, you know the library is a hub of activity here in town and really one of the very centers of our community. So, who else will I talk to other than our library director? Andrea Nicolai is here joining me and she has brought a whole bunch of stuff uh, to talk about as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Andrea, thanks. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, we love, I love the fact this is the second episode because that means it's hap It's going to happen. <laughs> it's this, is a, this is a series now and we're going to be moving forward with it. I think it's going to be uh, both fun to do, but also really informative for our audience, which is great. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, as I mentioned, you are surrounded by things it's here. It's true. The, the key word today is things. It is. Yes. So tell us a little bit what we're, you know, what one of the main things we'll be talking about today. Sure, sure. So um, I, I have brought some show and tell items because I am here to talk about the library of things and the Discover It Yourself collection in the children's room. So libraries for a while now have offered non-traditional collections and the Robbins Library is no exception to that. Um, the Library of Things was actually started several years ago. Um, it, it was started with funds from the Friends of the Robbins Library, our wonderful support organization, and Sustainable Arlington. Mm. So with that um, seed money, we were able to offer our initial Library of Things, and lately we've been adding things that are perfect for summertime, and that's why I wanted to focus on that especially today. Yeah, and you know, it's wonderful actually to see a little picnic basket there uh, right on top of the uh, on top of the desk here because we are happen to be filming today on a <laughs> glorious uh, morning in early May that we hope is a harbinger of things to come. Yeah, it, it's uh, a perfect day for a picnic, no doubt. Absolutely. So before we get into though the kind of expansion uh, uh, of of the items that you are making available for people, let me just ask you. So you mentioned uh, here in Arlington, the Library of Things has a five, six year history. Um, but what, what about that idea in general? Tell us mm -hmm. what the concept is, and where it comes from, and what the goals are for it. Sure, so um, as I said, the Library of Things has, and, and non-traditional items in public libraries in general go back a ways. And we, we were, I mean, we adopted it when there was kind of a wave of interest in non-traditional library items. Um, actually, during the building study that we conducted in 2017, excuse me, um, a lot of the feedback from the community was, hey, we want to see uh, maker space in the library. We want to see um, some items in the library that we can try out and, and experiment with, you know, whether it was technology related, craft related. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the space to establish a maker space within the library. And we didn't have also the, the staffing that is required to support a space like a maker space. Um, so as a sort of a compromise, we decided to start the Library of Things as a sort of, hey, take it home, <laughs> right. try this out, take it home and use it. Right. So um, that was kind of how it, it how, how the collection um, was inspired. It was mm -hmm. really community inspired and that's what led to our conversations with, again, Sustainable Arlington and the Friends of the Robbins Library. So we were really lucky to um, be able to kind of catch that wave and start with you know, pretty modest collection. And now mm -hmm. we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight categories of things in the library of things. And there's also in the Discover It Yourself collection in the children's room, a variety of things for kids to, to use and experiment with at home. So, um, and I, I assume those two things are really linked in that the library of things itself, of course, you can be uh, borrowing any of those items for the sake of your children, if you're a parent or something like that, or for their amusement or entertainment or whatever. But a lot of the times the library of things will, you know, be stuff that adults will, will take on and then mm -hmm. DIY uh, the discover it yourself part of the children's uh, section is, is basically a children's version of the same thing. Exactly. And one of our hopes with this collection, you know, a lot of 
folks, they might have a one-time use or need for something. Um, one of the things I often use in, as an example of that is our um, VHS to digital um, converter. VHS? <laughs> VHS, yes. <laughs> yes, once upon a time. No. Um, so with that, I mean, you know, you might have a stack of, of home videos that you've been meaning to convert for a while, and you might need that one time, and then, you know, what are you going to do? Let it to a friend, probably. So we're just, you know, we're filling that, that role of, you know, the friend who lends you the thing that you need only one time. So um, that's worked really, really well. And, um, and the same thing goes with, with the kids' things. It's like, you know, your, your kid might be interested in a craft and want to try it one time and then get bored with it. Or they become like completely inspired by it and you decide, oh, okay, I'm going to purchase this for my home. So it's kind of a, a try before you buy yeah. um, opportunity as well. What so, a, and I mean, <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm, I'm sure both of those examples you've just given are going to have people's ears perking up, especially I think uh, the latter with, you know, parents kind of going, oh, wow, I can just try that out, can I? And see whether, uh, you know, my son or daughter, or, you know, whether they are going to like this or not mm -hmm. without, yeah, that's, um, that's a luxury that I wish we had had, I have to say, when our children were young. Um, I also want to mention something really important that we, we added during the pandemic. We added 20 hotspots in the Library of Things so that when people need internet, when their internet fails, or you know, we know how dependent wow. we were on the internet for all kinds of things, including school during the pandemic. So, um, so adding these are those portable hotspots, hot spots, basically. Portable hotspots, and they were actually purchased with a grant from the state. So. Um, it was, those are, have been out constantly almost since we added mm -hmm. them to the collection. And so that's an example of a technology thing that, you know, as opposed to being sort of fun, um, was actually kind of a necessity for a lot of people during the last couple of, of years. Mm -hmm. and, and how do things work in terms of the checkout uh, process and duration with Mm -hmm. things in the library of things. Great question. And I'm going to refer to my cheat sheet because, you know, the library director doesn't always remember the lo <laughs> loaning rules. Um, so things go out generally for a week and, um, and they have to be returned um, because usually they're on hold for someone else, um, especially if it's a, a popular item like the hotspots. Yes, that's what got me thinking this way, uh, yeah, thinking, yeah. Uh, assuming that there's going to be more of a demand than there is supply, even though 20 sounds like a, a good number. Yeah. Uh, as you said, they're in constant use. So, yeah. um, so as opposed to the, you know, we'll just remind people that uh, the Robbins Library's very generous checkout policy for, for books and other kinds of materials. Uh, I'm most familiar with books. I know you can take it out for three weeks and that it can renew for another three weeks and then another. So mm -hmm. that's a good long chunk of time that I often take advantage of, I have to say, uh, with the books. But here you, you need things circulating in and out, I assume, a little bit more. Yeah, they're, they're popular items. So we like to keep them, keep them going in circulation. Um, and we will call you if, <laughs> if you hang on to it too long. Uh -huh. But we haven't really run into that too much. Um, there have been a couple of issues with hotspots or Chromebooks not coming back on a, in a timely way, but for the most part, people are good about it. Um, you know, Arlington is full of people who care about each other, so we, we like to see that it's, it's working as a collection. It's a community that, you know, does, that, that is generous spirited mm -hmm. collectively, I think, in that way. And one of the great examples, I've mentioned this before in, in subsequent years after you guys made this policy change, but I have to say I was skeptical about how it would work once you removed the fines from, you know, people having overdue materials. And, you know, you you I remember you specifically, Andrea, were quite confident that that people were going to respond with their best selves. Mm. Um, and I assume that that's happened generally because I have not heard that this has been a problem. Yeah. Thanks for reminding people that we are fine free, um, something we're really proud of. It's been that way since 2019, and a lot of Massachusetts libraries have followed since. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most recent Minuteman library to go find free is Ashland. So, yay Ashland. <laughs> right, um, and yay Arlington for leading the charge. We were, we were an early adopter, yes, I'm proud <laughs> to say. 
That's great. Um, okay, well, we have mentioned and referred to the fact that you've got a number of things here and some show and tell to do, so let's yeah. get going on that. All right, well, you know, picnic basket, I, I think I, I raised this a little bit earlier. Um, <laughs> what does it contain? It contains all of the... Oh, it contains, it's absolutely. It contains nothing. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I thought it would have like champagne glasses inside, but uh -huh. it is it is a basket. Mm -hmm. um, that's funny. I, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Yeah, go ahead. That's a nice <laughs> exactly. empty picnic basket, which it's again, great, people can fill with the vessel. stuff that they're going to bring pic for picnics. So That's fair right. enough. That's right. Well, you know, who wants to use um, champagne glasses that someone else has used anyway? I was and gonna... plus they'd have to be those plastic ones that, you know, that would break on the lawn anyway. Um, yeah. So that's, are, that's my you know, cover there. Exactly. Um, we also have an orienteering kit from the Children's Library of Things, which comes with a map and compass book, as well as, of course, a compass. And that's what you need for orienteering. So that's the, the orienteering kit. I also brought a nature exploration kit, which, ooh, I'm gonna knock the picnic basket right <laughs> off the table. Um, which actually comes with nets. A lot of kids are, mm. you know, they, they're interested in catching fireflies and all kinds of other, other creatures to kind of look at for a while and then release. So, <laughs> and we also have some, um, a journal that you can add to, um, similar to the journals that we circulate with our American mm -hmm. Girl dolls. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that collection also, but we have American Girl dolls that circulate. And we also have here the Kid's Guide to Exploring Nature. So all kinds of good things in this so it looks backpack. yeah right so it looks to me then that what what people would take out um is the backpack itself mm -hmm. uh That's filled right. with a number of different items that would make sense for the activities they're interested in yes um but of course then people have to make sure that they're good about returning yeah. the entirety of of those and there is a handy checklist Okay. so that you can Great. check and make sure that all the things are, are together. Um, this is a beach tent. This is brand Whoa. new to the Library of Things um, for the, in far, insofar as the adult collection. So if you've been thinking about what it might be like to use a beach tent and you haven't been able to take the plunge and make that purchase, Take try the it plunge, out. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Pun not intended, but it's still good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are the things that I brought to show show you today. But there's a lot more. I I, I was uh, hesitant. I only wanted to bring what I could carry easily <laughs> into and out of your studio. So yeah, those no, are just we a we appreciate that, and it is just a sampling. But I think it's a, you know, it's a really nice little mix of things to show a couple of of, of your of your main points. One is we are speaking to you in May, um, and we are anticipating. We hope better weather to come uh, and for a number of months. And so kids will not only be enjoying that weather, uh, one, one assumes, but they'll also be out of school for a, a certain amount of time in these yeah. next months. So That's right. uh, parents and children alike, I, I think are gonna be making great use of Definitely. the items you've just m mentioned. And the fact that uh, you guys have, ex you, you, you mentioned the whole library of things is about non-traditional items that you know you can make available to people to to borrow for some amount of time. I never would have thought about a beach tent in mm. there, and that's perfect because that's again, I mean, who knows until generally after you've spent the money whether it's actually going to be something that makes sense or not. Yeah, and you can take out more than one thing at a time. So if you want to check out our ukulele, check out our picnic basket, check out the beach tent. I mean, that's a day. That's a fun day at the beach. Musical. <laughs> That's, that is, yeah, that is very fun. And it can all fit in the picnic basket that's since almost, there's nothing else in there. So. Yeah, it's almost perfectly the right size. That's right. <laughs> well, so. that really is a, um, you know, I, I think a, just kind of a splendid offering um, that is, is only going to continue to expand, I assume, right? Yeah. And actually that brings me to something I wanted to mention and give a shout out to the town about. Um, a lot of people ask us sometimes uh, whether they can donate a gently used thing to our collection, and we don't accept used things. For one thing, we don't have the space to store a big collection of used items. Um, space is at a premium in the library. So I was really excited when I saw that there's a swap shed that's begun for the town, and you can bring things to the, sh the swap shed, take a thing, leave a thing, or you, you don't have to take a thing. You can just 
I mean, you don't have to bring a thing to right. exchange. You can just right. shop Right, you can just participate in one part of it. You can yeah. take, you can leave, you can, yeah. And I just think that is so fabulous and it's gonna really provide us with not only the ability to refer people, you know, and, and let people know about that great resource and service, but also, um, you know, another way that Arlington is looking out for the environment, so. Yeah, and uh, you know, we will just quick quick plug that the swap shed is located over on Ryder Street, which is where the recycling center is for town, et cetera. And uh, that's right near the bike path, just across uh, the bike path from uh, the rec center that people are probably familiar with. So um, that's the general location. Again, it's Ryder Street for the swap shed that Andrea was just talking about. And now that you mentioned where the swap shed is, I do want to mention where to find our library of things. So um, on robinslibrary.org, if you go to collections and services, you'll see the library of things listed there. And you'll also see the Discover It Yourself collection listed there. Um, and American Girl Dolls are also one of the collections listed. So really easy to find the page that shows you what, all the different categories for the things and go from there. Mm -hmm. and, and that'll connect you to the catalog where you can place a hold or what have you. See, yes, see and uh, I do, I, my own assumption is that people will have to be prepared, kind of a little bit thinking in advance maybe if they want the beach tent or something else like that where there's only a single item and mm -hmm. ma there may be many people who want it because as you say, people can have it for up to a week. Mm -hmm. um, so I imagine they just have to, everybody's got to be prepared probably for being on hold, you know, yeah. having a hold for a little bit. Yeah, and that's not unusual for the library anyway. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just as you might not get that beach read in time, you might not get the beach tent in time, but you know it's there and it might inspire another trip to the beach. All right, so get, yes, get your acts together now for uh, June and July on the beach. Um, all right, that is wonderful stuff. We've got n only about maybe 10 minutes left in this particular episode, and we have other things to talk about, um, including a much more sober uh, topic. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want, I'd, I'd love to have you explain uh, the current situation that we are aware of, not just locally, but, you know, regionally and nationally around book challenges. So. Yeah, thank you. It's a very serious issue, and uh, we're seeing challenges come up around the country, sometimes from individuals and sometimes from organized groups. Um, we've seen examples in recently in Florida. Um, I will share the example of a board book called Everywhere Babies by um, Myers, an, an author named Myers, a book that we have in the Robbins Library Children's Collection that features images of, it's a beautifully illustrated book um, featuring images of, of babies, babies being nursed, babies being changed, babies doing all sorts of different activities. And um, this was a book that was challenged and, and banned in Florida. And it is a really dangerous, dangerous thing um, when you start going down that road, because we're a democracy. We, we promote intellectual freedom. We uphold intellectual freedom in the library, and we have policies to protect that freedom. So we have a collection development policy for the Robbins Library and we both we use that that policy both to guide our purchasing and also to justify mm -hmm. the materials that are in our collections. So at the end of that policy, actually if you're interested, you can find it online in our policies section. It's another screen we can show um, during this this uh, this show, but um, there's a, re a request for reconsideration form. And so if a library patron in Arlington had a, an issue with a, a book or, or any piece of material for that matter, mm -hmm. they, could, they would be offered that request for reconsideration form. And I am the person who's ultimately responsible for everything in the collection. Um, of course, we have many people, many librarians purchasing books for our collections, purchasing books and materials. But ultimately, I would be the one to respond to a challenge like that. And um, the, the form asks some really basic questions like, have you read this in its entirety? Or have you consumed this in its entirety? Have you, um, what is your issue with the item? What would you like the library to do about it? Um, so just, you know, it's like a one pager, but. Right, it's giving people a voice. I mean, you know, it, it's basically allowing them to register um, their, uh, their reservations, their concerns, or their their request, mm -hmm. um, but provide some basis for that. 
That's and right. That makes sense. I'm, I'm curious though, um, as you've said, this is a, I don't know if you'd call it an epidemic. It, it, it's perhaps not at that level right now, but it's happening in a lot of different places around the country. Mm -hmm. What's the prevalence of such challenges here? The reconsideration form that you were just describing, mm -hmm. How many of those do you have to deal with in any given year? And again, I'm not asking for a precise number, but is it a rare thing or? I can give you a precise number. Oh. It's two. Uh, I've been working <laughs> in Arlington since 2012 and I have seen two. Um, and I, I won't go into detail, but I will um, share that, that we in both cases decided to maintain the material in the collection. Mm -hmm. um, and Every time that happens, uh, what we do is file a report with the Office of Intellectual Freedom mm -hmm. with the American Library Association. So it's really vital that, that we keep track of these challenges as a, as, a, as a library community and as a society, because it kind of tells us where the, you know, how it take, allows us to take the temperature mm -hmm. on challenges and, and be prepared. But I mean, you've certainly answered my question because two, two instances in 10 years is uh, rare indeed. Um, well, um, I mean, it perhaps isn't unusual in, um, I mean, maybe I'm, um, I've been in Arlington for, uh, well, I've got, I've got like a, a different focus um, than maybe other towns uh, might have, but um, I wouldn't say that it's atypical for Arlington Mm -hmm. to, to kind of ha take a more, um, a stronger supportive view mm -hmm. of intellectual freedom. Yeah, I think, I think that that's right. <laughs> it's um, not going out on a limb, right? <laughs> no, def definitely not. And um, I'm, I am curious also, obviously a sample size of two uh, is not going to yield an answer here, but in general, as you I'm sure are aware of how this is playing out in other, in other libraries is, uh, also. Um, do such challenges uh, tend to center around the books in a collection? Or, because I can imagine that movies and music, for instance, which are also made available regularly, you know, and have been for a long time through the libraries, that those might elicit um, this, these kinds of objections, even perhaps to a greater degree. Mm. Um, I mean, as far as my experience, it's, um, well, you know, there was one instance of, of it was an image actually on the cover of a magazine. And then in another instance, it was actually a program. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was a, pro a public program that we were offering. So. Wow. So in fact, n not much in the way of, <laughs> of book challenges as it turns no. out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And I mean, we, we always welcome the opportunity to have a dialogue with, a, with anyone in the community who has mm -hmm. any, questions or, or curiosity about why something is in the collection or why something is being offered as a program or as a multimedia material. Um, it's, it's just, it's not a bad thing to have a conversation about it. And yet, you know, we have a responsibility as a library to abide by the, the collection development policies that we've adopted for all kinds of good reasons. So, mm -hmm. and I would encourage anybody who's interested to go ahead and read our collection development policy. I think it's actually a really fascinating document for anyone in the, in the democracy to, to be able to, to mm -hmm, read and understand mm -hmm. the role of a public library in providing all kinds of materials on all kinds of viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's basically where anybody can find out um, quite explicitly, I'm sure, and transparently what the guidelines are, what the, what the priorities are that you're gonna follow mm -hmm. in terms of uh, adding to, to the collection. Um, okay, uh, that's, you know, as, as promised, that's a, that was a, a dive into more serious matters for sure. And um, we are grateful to be in a community in which, as you've just cited, these instances are rare. Um, and in general, there is this idea of, uh, of, of support around the widest possible uh, latitude in terms of, you know, providing materials and, prov and engendering, you know, conversation. Um, so, um, before I let you go though, um, I'd like to make sure that in each of these episodes we give, you know, folks some kind of preview or, or just point towards things that are highlights in the upcoming, uh, schedule at the library for people to, 
Yeah, sure, we'll... sure. So I'm going to mention two dates. One is the is May 21st, which is the Spring Fling in Arlington Heights. And the Spring Fling is a, a big street festival that's oriented around environmentalism, environmental issues. And the library will have a table there. I will be there showing off our things. <laughs> maybe I'll bring some, some food in the picnic basket. Yeah, maybe so. Although, again, who knows? I mean, these things are going to be popular. Yeah, let's hope you've got true. some things to bring. I, yes, yes, <laughs> let's hope. Or, uh, or let's hope I don't. Maybe they'll all be out. That's uh, right. That maybe you'll be, be there. Thing. You'll be like... <laughs> I've got nothing because... <laughs> I can show you the list. Um, but I'll be there talking about the things that we have in the library um, that support conservation and environmentalism. And I also want to mention the date of June 18th, which is going to be a huge day in Arlington because June 18th is Porch Fest. Mm -hmm. June 18th is also the kickoff of the summer reading program in Arlington. So the library will be offering... Um, there will be a, a popsicle giveaway in the children's room in the garden. And of course, the opportunity to sign up for, for summer reading, get your face painted, do activities, check out books. It's going to be a fabulous day in the library for kids and families. And we're also, we, we're also planning a musical element mm -hmm. to tie in with Porch Port. Fest. So stay tuned for that, finalizing the details there. But June 18th is going to be a really, really exciting day in town. Yeah. And generally, generally, we can count on mid-June as being, a, you know, some lovely weather for mm -hmm. us to be able to enjoy uh, these, you know, well, we can always escape indoors at the library if we need to. That's right. Um, and summer reading kickoff will happen rain or shine. I assure you, you that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Unlo uh, yeah. Let, let's keep fingers crossed that Porch Fest has uh, ideal conditions for or for that, but I think it's lovely to hear that you, you know, you're looking to tie those two things in because Porch Fest is an event that everybody really loves and supports here in this town and we haven't been able to have it in the, in the way that it is going to be. Yeah. Uh, we, again, fingers crossed, uh, this particular year. Uh, mm -hmm. Yet another reason to celebrate just getting back to a world uh, that we took for granted for a long time. Yeah, and, and big shout out to Arlington Center for the Arts and Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture who have worked so hard to make these events happen and really excited to be part of it in our, our way at the library. All right, well, Andrea, we are down to mere seconds um, in this episode. Anything that you, know, you want to mention that we haven't yet? I would just encourage everybody to think about summer reading. We offer it for all ages, not just kids, but for teens and adults too. So um, if, you know, if you need a little inspiration, a little extra nudge to, to consume books or any media, you know, I encourage you to, to participate in summer reading and really um, use that as your, your inspiration for culture. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much, James. Thank you. She is Andrea Nikolai, the Director of Libraries here in town. I am James Milan, and this is Check It Out. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next time.